So this is a book of prose poems called Mystery of My Country. It feels like it's my first book of poetry and uh, a lot of these copies were destroyed in the flood in Baton Rouge. And uh, I want to read just a couple. The new word. When I wake, I speak the new word, or it speaks me wanting to run away in the fields of a headlong sentence. The new word, and I free at last, free always, for freedom is our native spirit, born aloft for higher play and meaning. The new word, and I once away, once away, can you hear the new word, the new sentence, and how it wants to play or is playing even now in the mouth of one who loves so much he cannot bear the new word. The new word, and what it is saying to him, to her, to all the little ones, the blossoms and the bees that can't be counted and hum for all of us, and not just in the gathering of pollen or the making of honey, not just the colorful kingdom of stamen, but the new word. The new word is a place where I must go and die to myself. The new word, the new word, and beautiful sound, the new life. The new life as I rise out of the ashes of myself. The new word, the newly spoken or never said before, beyond all ken, for sky becometh me. The new breath, the new wonder, for it is good to love what I have been given and to yearn for it even in the midst of loving it so much. What I am, not just this flesh, as somewhere close a river comes for me is even now more manifest an architect of my dreams, my spirit, the holy flowing, the pure water, and what gleaming stones and pebbles I sieve on and hold up as a humble offerings and all of the earth that I am would celebrate, become love, growing in me a garden, a paradise, a book of poems, my friends talking and laughing, sipping their wine and vodka, the new word, the new day, the new voice, the new sun, the new kiss coming after a new sigh, a new moan, a new whimper, the new word finished at last, speaking with its hushed and hidden voice. The new import and significance not yet gleaned or understood, only felt in the electrical field of one's wide awake and trembling skin. Uh, unbearable ink. The ink runs dry where I live, but there's still a little trickle left to write with, a few eyelashes of strokes or so, maybe half a page or less. I crush a few seeds and berries in my hands until my knuckles turn white, making homemade ink this way. People need ink like water, like touching and laughing so hard you can hardly breathe, though if you swallow ink it will kill you. The ink of Tina's blonde hair tousled in sleep is a sweet meadow where I breathe all the days of my life. My brother's voice on the phone from Chicago is guttural ink shrouded in smoke, or maybe it's the smoke signals of his dreams that he shares with me, myself unworthy to hear them. I look outside and the ink of a maple trip is splashing all over, writing ecstatic love letters in the wind, a kind of poem with a thousand leaves in it that make their own sighing sounds. When I die, black ink will pour from my mouth like bitter tar, but I hope it will taste like honey to the ground. And the earth is a poem, and so is any star with their ink of atmosphere, Cassiopeia, Andromeda of ink, breaking dawns and nights, almost eternal wheeling in their wake. Sometimes I can't bear the ink bursting in my veins, not because it hurts, but because it's so beautiful, unbearable, unbearable ink that only wants to be written by a trembling hand whose fingers are smudged with its stain like dark grapes after a wedding feast where everyone danced barefoot and weeping with joy, writing their own miraculous vows of paradise. And just one more, it's, uh, it's heartbreaking, beautiful. I hope my editors and people I love and Baton Rouge. Uh, verb. Then I woke and I was in that place where the marigold swayed as if in a swoon and I could pick up a simple glass or cup and marvel at it. Child, child, the strange and see-through object, the holy glass new to my hand and I could walk around marveling at the world of mysterious becoming as I participated in its shape shiftings and turnings as one of its very own like a single piece of glowing straw and stacks unimaginable in their brightness and I could feel the sunlight in my veins and hemoglobin liquid running but also chlorophyll green leaf green growing and what tender rays I was made to give off as I felt a surge of waves cresting then crashing inside my chest over and over and I did not need a priest or doctor or ecclesiastical scholar to tell me of the spiritual taste of sunlight reflecting off a chalkboard or any surface or that words come out of the earth like blossoms or 
roots, and lo, I was one of them, a newfangled verb never before uttered, and this an inestimable gift so profound I would not survive the bounty of it, for my body was learning how to be boundless, as I found a way to go beyond the body, one sigh at a time, and God and all the saints and angels were cheering me on, shouting with gladness and clapping their hands and wings as I looked down at my own, marveling at my open palms crack like shocks of wheat in the dry riverbeds there and rivers beneath my skin connecting me to all the water on earth. Oh, sweet and ongoing baptismal fountain, and unstoppable flow. I said, sweep, sweep me away. I am ready, mighty current. I am with you all the way.